we had a session on washing schools on the first day here and I think the importance of water sanitation and hygiene in schools is vital. We know that uh, less than 50% of schools globally have water and only about 36% of sanitation. And this is particularly important for girls, um, particularly as they reach uh, puberty and uh, they start to reach the age of menstruation. It's an area we don't like to talk about very often, but the privacy and dignity of girls and allowing them to go to school, to, to have more days in school. An average girl can lose up to 32 days a year of, of, of the school year just because she's menstruating and she doesn't have a latrine to use or privacy at private area in which to, uh, in which to change and clean herself. So I think you know the whole issue of, uh, of washing schools, it's important for boys and girls, but for older girls it's critical. So menstrual hygiene, is that something that people talk about? What's your experience? Um, it's not talked about, but we've got some terrific examples and some terrific programs. Uh, Bangladesh have a terrific program in their schools. Um, India have a great both training program for girls and a, a, school, a school project. And in fact, they've even started uh, working, the government of India have started working with local uh, women's groups to produce sanitary napkins uh, locally that are, that are clean and, and, and safe to use. Because we forget that sometimes uh, if, if a girl has to use a cloth and has to, everything has to be done in secret, it can often cause bacterial infections that can lead to problems in later life. So this can cause serious health problems? Um, it can cause, I mean, you may not notice them at the time, but it can build up. And some studies are suggesting that if you have uh, chronic fungal infections regularly, it can lead to infertility. Okay. So what's needed to raise the awareness on the issue of menstrual hygiene? Well, I mean, you know, we, we know that sanitation alone is a taboo and, and menstrual hygiene is even a bigger, bigger taboo in many cultures. But yet, as we talk about it, as we present it at sessions, as we talk about it um, uh, with communities, with girls in schools, with teachers, we start to break the taboo around it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you find a lot more openness. I was at a conference once where a senior head of an education um, for a region turned around and said, why has nobody ever said this to me before? I never even thought about it because it doesn't affect me. And if only someone had said it to me, I could do something about it. So I think we have to be, be open enough to talk about it. So how do you get men to talk about menstrual hygiene? Probably more effectively than women, and a man talking about it is actually gets a lot more credibility probably than, than me talking about it. And many of my colleagues are very happy to talk about it. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're changing, society is changing. We have to try and be open, and, and I think we've got to be, we've also got to be sensitive. It is a sensitive area for many cultures, but I think we've got to do it in such a way that it's done se in, with sensitivity, and that also girls become um, the, the beneficiaries of, of something that's very, very positive. And basically, to say in advocacy level that you need uh, sanitation in schools for the privacy and dignity of girls, I don't think you necessarily have to get into a budget debate with the Minister of Finance on menstrual hygiene, but I do think you can use it for advocacy groups.